Venice and Kent side by side during the Gibraltar talks, described by Rhodesia's Ian Smith as the last chance for agreement. In the Tiger talks, Mr. Smith was just given a cabin in contrast to the Wilson stateroom. This time he had a whole guided missile destroyer. And he brought Mr. Lardner Burke, Rhodesia's Minister for Law and Order, who previously made a rather disconcerting impression on Mr. Wilson. He also came in company with Rhodesia's governor, Sir Humphrey Gibbs. In fact, Harold Wilson seemed to be anxious to relax the tensions that had marked their previous meeting on Tiger. Here, he's greeting Sir Joshua Hassan, Gibraltar's chief minister, and the governor, Sir Gerald Lathbury. But there was no hint of relaxation round the wardroom table. No hint of a repudiation of the big bone of contention whether Rhodesians are prepared to accept majority rule by black Africans in the foreseeable future. Like Mr. Smith, Mr. Wilson was only too well aware that the meeting was a critical juncture, not only in Rhodesia's relationship with us, but with the whole of Africa. It was certainly news to me that one of our greatest novelists, Anthony Trollope, was mainly responsible for the introduction of pillar boxes over 160 years ago. Now the latest trend shows that the familiar round or oval boxes have gone square, or at least rectangular. The Postmaster General posts the very first letter into the new slot to a descendant of Anthony Trollope in Australia. The new boxes are claimed to be far more efficient Letters are less liable to damage, and the collection time is cut by more than half. It does seem rather a paradox to streamline the collection so soon after slowing down the ordinary fourpenny mail. Birthed at Tower Pier, the car ferry Finn Partner. On board, an exhibition of exports to prove that Finns ain't what they used to be. Finland, being a member of the European Free Trade Area, can sell her goods over here without any additional import charges. Her fashions are being offered at much the same price as our own. And something already catching on over here, sauna bathing. Afraid we can only show you the censored version. Up on deck, not a visitor from outer space, but a weekend cottage in glass fibre designed by two Finnish architects. Hardly intended as a roses round the door sort of retreat, but a welcome change from the eternal caravan. Holds more girls too. Unfortunately, it works out a lot more expensive than a caravan, three and a half thousand pounds. setting the seal on a week of great show-jumping entertainment, starting with the Butlin Championship. With only four of our 16 international riders in Mexico, the Horse of the Year show produced a host of talent. This is Peter Robeson on Firecrest. But the championship winner is a 24-year-old girl from Cheshire, Jean Goodwin and all trumps. Going last in the jump off, she beat Germany's Tokyo bronze medal winner with a faultless round, finishing just 1.4 seconds ahead. Princess Margaret presented the trophy. But she wasn't the only princess in the arena. The next night, her niece, Princess Anne, was taking part in a quadrille open to pony clubs all over Britain. Her team from Battle in Sussex was one of only four to qualify for the finals. The princess was riding Man Friday, lent to her by one of her school friends. back to the show jumping, and among British riders in the Will's gold plate, Alan Oliver and Sweep, failing to sweep clean. The wall caused many a downfall. Top of the morning bids his rider good night. Andrew Fielder, riding Dixieland, comes off little better. Second place in the event went to Germany's Sonke Sonkesen on Fabus. Although they faulted in the final jump off, they sailed over the wall.
But the prize went to Warwickshire farmer Ted Edgar and Uncle Max, a pretty rare combination. This huge grey used to be an American rodeo performer and Ted bought him only last month. Hard to reconcile rodeos with show jumping, but Ted Edgar and Uncle Max are obviously a tremendous partnership. Not far from Albert Bridge, on a bomb site in Oakley Street, as a matter of fact, a New Zealand musician is about to set fire to a piano. Just a normal part of the Chelsea scene, you'll be saying. But let me tell you more. Anna Lockwood, who graduated from her university with a first in music, is already getting tired of rigid musical systems. She's become more interested in pure sounds. So she's recording a conflagration concerto. Meanwhile, husband Harvey Matuso attempts to conjure up the spirit of Ludwig von Beethoven. built Ford, one of the really rare ones. A reminder not to miss our motor show special in the next edition featuring some of the most extravagant cars on the market. As well as all the latest in budget motoring at Earl's Court, we'll be looking at some of the most exotic machinery, cars which spell motoring with a capital M. Among interested spectators, Graham Hill. Many men have given their all for beautiful women, many others have been seduced by machines. If you're ripe for seduction, join us at Earl's Court to savour some of the most luscious, desirable cars that anyone can possess. <laughs> 